Hey, welcome to my channel, I'm Perfect Christian, where I am unworthy, I am not religious, but God still loves me anyway, and he gives me grace. Today I want to talk about being single, um, and how being single is a blessing, and a lot of people feel as if it's not. Because I'm 25, um, I'm hitting that age where society has made it where if you're not married or have kids by 25, then something's wrong with you, or... If you're not rushed to have children or get married, then something's wrong with you. When in reality, um, God has a way of molding you and making you into the man and woman that you're meant to be before you get married. And I feel like a lot of people aren't whole before they get married, which is why they have all these issues. Because they haven't even worked on those issues. A lot of people get married and our Christians are not even working on anything. They're just, I'm a Christian. They're not putting in any type of work changing as a person, which I'm finding out and seeing. And then go to church and have and having sex and fornicating and think as if it's is not wrong and thinking that the word of the Bible is written by man so therefore it's not true so they feel as if they don't have to follow the commandments because it's old um, and that's what I'm finding out now because I live in Atlanta Georgia where there are a lot of churches but a lot of people aren't in them because people aren't believing in God because the church is pulling them away due to them being so judgmental and i live in the land of atlanta where there's a lot of gays and homosexuality and yes i'll be talking about that but it's with love and it's not in a way of judgment because like i said i was out there in the streets too so i understand but i understand how it is to be so trapped in that lust and i feel like when it comes down to people being gay they're looking for love in the wrong places when really god is god loves them and then they want to accept how God made them because they're allowing the devil to put these thoughts in their mind that being gay is normal. When it's unnatural, it really is, and the devil will have you thinking it's natural. And because everybody else says it's okay, it doesn't mean it's okay, and that's what a lot of people aren't getting. Um, and yeah, me just being who I am now. I've been celibate for, I guess 12 months, something like that. Um, I don't count, but I've been telling you for a long time. Um, and I've been doing good. It's called self-control and realizing that you're worth. And I think me focusing more on myself is the reason why I've been so good for so long because I'm so focused on myself and changing to the point where I'm finding things that I need to work on and I'm continuing to work on those things. So I guess I'm staying, make sure I stay on the right track. I guess when you say me being more obedient, I would guess I would say that's what I'm doing, being more obedient and following his commandments and not listening to any of these Christians out here that aren't religious, that aren't into God at all. I wouldn't even say religious, just aren't feeling it at all. They say they're Christians, but they're really not in it, you know? And those are called lukewarm Christians, and those type of Christians will end up going to hell because they so wrapped up in the world. And know, oh, the world says that's a man-made Bible, you know, it's a, amazing the things I hear come out of some Christian's mouth. It's like, how are you a Christian, but you're saying these things as if, oh, you shouldn't listen to the word, it's old, and would you follow everything in the word, and it's like, why are you questioning my faith, and why are you even questioning God, period, in his word, and it's like, it's amazing what people say, you know, and they get so wrapped up in the Black Lives Matter and everything like that. We don't really have that here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, me being single, it gives me time to just, like I said, change and grow. And I think I'm so caught up in that to the point where I'm not even noticing I'm single, honestly. And yes, I'm a nice looking woman, so of course guys try to talk to me, but if you're gonna come in my life, you have to put God first and put in work. And if you aren't, I have to get rid of you. And there's no like in between with that. That's how I feel right now. If you're not a godly man, you're not putting in any work, you're not changing and you don't see nothing wrong with yourself and you're not even, even trying to work on that, but you're so focused on, I need to be in a relationship, I need to be in a relationship, but you're not even whole. And that's why I'm getting out of a lot of people I'm meeting in general, girls and guys. And it's like, you're so hungry for a relationship, but you're not even complete. You know, and you wanna have kids, but you're not even complete. You're not even focusing on God. Why would you have a child when you're not even focused on the Lord, you know? Cause then when you have that child, you're gonna be so caught up raising them to the point where you forget about God, you'd be so focused on your child, if that makes sense. You can do both though, honestly, but me living here in Atlanta, being single is something because I think that's anywhere, you know, a lot of people aren't into God and they're not putting in any work. And I want to be surrounded by people that are going to uplift me and want to see me happy and not see me fall flat on my face and not make, a fun, make fun of the religion, you know, or make fun of me because I'm different 
and I don't want to be around people that kind of understand me in a way also and not always questioning me and looking at me sideways, you know? And that's what I'm finding too. That's why I had to cut people off. And yes, I do get lonely, but that just reminds me that I need to keep going and that one day God is going to put the people in my life that are on the same track. And I'm not going to rush and just, ooh, I got a friend, woo. No, I'm going to be hesitant. I'm going to fill that person out, you know, get to know their and see their fruits, you know, because people will deceive you and say they're Christians. But they are in these streets, you know. You know, and I, like I tell people, I am working on my cursing and I'm doing that. I'm still, like I'm saying, I'm in a process of growing and becoming a better woman. And most people say, oh, you're very hungry for it. I guess I would say that I am. Because uh, I just want to become a better woman, you know. Just for myself. I'm not even so focused on relationships, honestly. But, yeah, I've met some people, some good guys, you know. But they weren't the right guys. But for me, doing to them being, we are unequally yoked. I can't be in a relationship with an unequally yoked person. Because if I'm over here and you're over here, it's not going to work. You're going to feel as if I'm judging you because I'm growing and progressing, you know? And you're going to feel like, ooh, you think you're better than someone or, ooh, you're looking down on me. When in reality, I'm changing and you don't like it. But the thing is, just because I don't want to party and drink, as a young 25-year-old, nothing is wrong with that. Just because I don't want to have sex and dress half naked, nothing should be wrong with that person. Why does it have to be an issue because someone, did, someone decides to stand on their two feet and not do those sins and not parade them on the earth as if it's an okay thing to do? Because it's not. And that's what a lot of people aren't getting, you know? And that's what I'm seeing in this world. And I'm not frustrated with that. It's more of, you know, when you're in the wilderness, like they said, motivated to win, Miss Sharon, you're going to be on your own for a while. And I see I'm going to be on my own for a while, and it's cool. You know, and I'm allowing God to guide me. I, you know, I have to get things done. You know, find a, me personally, I feel like me looking for a job, you know, in the process of that, I want to make sure the job glorifies God. I'm not just choosing a job to make money, you know, if that makes sense. I would love to, I just want a stable job, you know. And the thing is, when you go to these jobs, you be around these people with their negative energy and nasty ways of thinking. And I don't, I don't really don't let them let rub off on me because all I'm thinking in my head is that I need to keep going and growing because I don't want to continue to get wrapped up in the madness. Um, and then, like, you have women. You know, sometimes women in general are very messy and like to talk about people. And sometimes I can say I do get caught up in that sometimes. And I'm, I wouldn't say I'm ashamed, but I can tell you with a straight face, I do get caught up in that sometimes. And it's very ungodly. And then that's how I know I've changed because when I do say anything negative about that, it, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I used to get bullied, so why would I sit here and be the person that's coming off like a bully, you know? I have to check myself sometimes, and I'm just being honest. I feel like a lot of Christians, again, are honest, and they come on here with this perfect, Hi, I'm so perfect. I don't sin. I don't curse. I love the Lord. Like, honey, come on now. Let's be real. In this world, it's hard, and you want to bust somebody upside the head because they're disrespectful and rude. And for some reason, it's always an issue with Christians. Oh, why are you so hype? Why are you so about that God all of a sudden? Because I wasn't before, and I'm finding that people, they like to take advantage of you when you're weak and you're broken. And then once you hold and you stand on your two feet and you ain't about that mess, it's an issue. You know, because you're not out here in these streets with them running around these streets. I'm like so peaceful, you know. Um, I feel like being single again is a blessing. And a lot of people don't see that. I'm 25 years old and I can say being single is a blessing. It's a blessing. Me, I'm, I told this girl, I was like, I'm not having sex. And she's like, oh, that's good. And I feel like a lot of people need to have friends like that. And are out here in these streets having sex so they can have that friend to come to, you know, so they can grow, become a better Christian. You know, you need those people in your life. You need those good people. You need those folks that's not out here drinking and cussing and acting a fool. You need those people in your life because they can get you on the right track if you're just ready and you about that life and you really put in some work. You know, I like to see those people. People like that, they say they're boring because they're not in the streets, running around these streets on Instagram just to have naked. They are not boring. They are people of God. They have changed and they are strong and they're a, a representation of a person that has grown. You know, and that's a blessing walking right there. That's a, someone you can talk to that understands your pain. And like I said on my, I have quotes that I always say, broken people can fix broken people and God uses broken people to help broken people. And like I tell people I was broken and now I'm not. And people are like, oh, I didn't know, I thought you was. See, look, it's crazy because a lot of people didn't feel like I was broken because they felt like how I was acting was normal. The heck is, my charger keeps acting stupid. I swear to God, it's pissing me off. What's wrong with you?
is it plugged in now? It's ridiculous. Oh, man. Yeah. We're dealing with technical issues. It's had a moment. But, um, yeah. And then I guess I can talk about the type of guy that I would want. Me personally, a guy who is worthy. He is a provider. He is observant. He's compassionate. He's a man of integrity. He's God fearing. He's fearless, you know? He's open for change. I feel like a lot of guys are not open for change. People in general, women and guys, it's both ways. Open-minded, you know, family-oriented, you know, caring. Like, I feel like being a caring guy is such a bad thing now. Like, oh, he's a punk. Ugh. It's like, no, that's a good man that actually cares about your soul. Like, what are you talking about? A man that tells you you need to cover up and respect your temple, that's a man of God. Like, a man that not out here drinking and calling girls all kind of cuss words and you know, oh, I'm about my and money, I make that money, you know. That's not a good man, you know. A man that, you know, knows God, you know, a man that prays. He'll pray for you before he prays for himself. A man that loves God more than he loves you and himself. You know, a man that knows his word, you know. He can speak that word like it ain't nothing, you know. He can break it down from, you know, chapter to chapter. And it's like, it's easy for him, you know. A man that walks to walk and talk to talk and not like, sitting there saying he a Christian, but he out here having sex with all kind of women. You know, a man that res respects his temple. Um, a man that knows his worth. Because I feel like a lot of men don't know their worth. That's why they come out here having sex and just, you know, and they're very insecure, I'm finding also. Um, a lot of men are insecure women too. So you're not the only one feeling insecure. There's a lot of men insecure because they feel as if they have to be this macho. I got to be in shape. I got to be fine. I got to have that money, you know. I got to be manly, I got to come off tough all the time, like, it, it's not that all the time, you know, it's really not, you know, and I always have that saying, do not donate sex, uh, stop giving out sex for free, you know, and it is what it is, that's why I tell myself, you don't be giving out your, your milk for free, it, it ain't happening, I feel like a, a man respects you more when you keep them legs closed. When you about, when you putting in when you changing and he see you changing and he see you respects your temple and you you covering up your temple. You covering up, you're very aware. Let me not show my boobs, let me cover that up, you know? That's that's a woman that knows her worth and that's actually reading her word. You can tell when a Christian actually is reading their word because of the way they change and act. A Christian that doesn't read their word, they're not aware of what they're doing. They really aren't. They walk around as if, oh, I'm a Christian, but you're not reading your word. You see, you're missing parts in the Bible that's very important to you as a woman. A woman as in general, we're supposed to carry ourselves with kindness and grace. And, you know, I feel like a lot of black women in general and women in general come off very headstrong and, you know, uh, if a nigga, uh, you know, ooh, that's not, that's not ladylike. Um, it's really not. You're supposed to be kind and great. Show yourself with grace and kindness and show who you are as a woman through your works. You know, in a way of being giving and nice and kind. I feel like a lot of women aren't like that because the world has programmed a woman to be this, I guess you would say, feminist or independent individual when in reality it's God first, man, then woman. So therefore, with this old oh, woman can do everything, you cannot. And it is what it is. Um... Yes, you can work. It's cool. I get it. But at the same time, you need to let your man be a man. And that's what a lot of women are messing up on. And I'm 25 year old saying this, and it's crazy because it's women that's older than me that don't even know this. They're teaching their daughters the wrong way in life. And it's like, come on now. Okay, it's okay to go out there and get your education. You know, it's okay that you know how to clean and cook by yourself and all that. Yeah, you're supposed to know those things already naturally. If you don't, you need to maybe work on that because, yeah, come on now. Some people don't know how to cook. It's like, oh, God, you know, you got to learn how to make some eggs or something. You got to learn how to cook and clean, okay? Come on, take, so you can learn how to take care of your family, you know? Yeah, it's okay to work and have something going for yourself. But don't get so caught up in that that you lose your focus on God and that you don't know your purpose on earth. Because every woman has a purpose on earth, and it's not about that getting that money, getting that degree, getting that nice car. That's not what you was on earth to put up, be put on. I don't know what everybody keep thinking. Mm, I'm supposed to be on earth to do all that. That's a, that's a messed up way of thinking because the world has programmed you to think that's a blessing. That's something to do. That's not nothing to do. If you're not walking in your purpose, you're wasting your time, honestly. You really are, and that's how I feel. You're really wasting your time because you don't even know why you're on earth for it. You was put on earth to be a servant of God and tell people about the Lord. You're supposed to change 
everything about you for some glorified guy and if it's not and it's about that making that money and dressing half naked on instagram and trying to get a man in the most nastiest you see you have to watch how you get a man because i keep trying to tell people that if you get a man in lust you're gonna lose him in lust and that's why he cheats and the thing is if his lust and his flesh is so weak to the point where he has to have sex with you you have to check him and learn and teach him how to control himself because when he gets married he will cheat because the thing is if your, your flesh is that weak to the point where you can't even hold out for sex that's not good that's really that's a bad sign that's like back up keep it pushing sign he can't even wait for sex it's like you can't be obedient to god and that's just for girls too like you can't be obedient to god you, you can't keep the legs closed you can't you got to keep on having some sex because it feels good i get it though but it's like come on now is sex worth going to hell for that's what you should ask yourself that's what i tell myself is sex really worth going to hell for just to have some good sex is that really worth going to hell for that's what i had to tell myself because it's really not i have i'm literally was like i'm not gonna go to hell for having sex that's stupid as hell i'm not allowing the devil to get me that i'm no <laughs> I'm not going to hell for having sex. That's how I really feel within me. Because it's like, no, go somewhere. You know, ain't no Netflix and chilling. Ain't none of that over here. You know, because as I say to people, being single is a blessing. So don't have, don't let people have you thinking because you don't have kids. You know, and like all these material things and, you know, a degree, blah, blah. That's the way of their way of thinking. And that's so sad that they think that way because they don't even know their purpose. They're so caught up in that. They have not once even tried to figure out their purpose. And then they find themselves 50 years old like, dang, all I was doing is working. You know, I ain't put in no work for God. I ain't, I ain't changed or nothing. They still be stuck on, you know, kind of like all over the place. That's why you see a lot of old people in church because they realize they messed up when they were young. Because they like, dang, I was in here running these streets not even focusing on God so when they get older they actually take it serious which is good because it's not too late to put God first and get saved and change your ways it's really not it don't matter how deep you in how broken you are okay it don't matter if you're gay because a lot of people have been gay and been delivered from that you know and Christians out here pushing that on them you can't push something you can't push God on no one they have to be willing to accept him in their heart and if they aren't it's like you're talking to a brick wall and that's how that's how it's going to be and that's how life is and p christians need to wake up and realize that you can't push it down their throat they have to be open and willing you know and it's going to take time for them because some people sometimes in this world some people have to get beat up for a while they have to get beat up slapped up you know you know sad bad things have to happen unfortunately for them to even realize that god is really what all they need from the get-go and it's sad they have to get that deep in you know and they have to watch and see you get your butt beat until you realize that, oh, God is love. God is what I need. God is my father. He can be your friend. You be good. Like, you be chill. Like, it's not that deep in, you know? And it took me years, like I tell people, for me to get to this point. Um, that's why I'm cool being by myself, you know? And I will always be like that because I have God and it's like... I feel like I'm become, I'm complete and I'm getting to that point where I'm going to become a whole and whoever man that comes in my life, he has to be whole. You, and I would know he's not whole by his fruits and his spirit and the way he carries himself. So you can't fool me with that one, honestly. And the devil's going to try to bring in, you know, counterfeits like they be saying on YouTube, you know, counterfeits. You know, people that seem like they've got their life, but really, they really aren't. But it's crazy because at some point, they always show their true colors, which is funny to me because they always do. It's like at some point, they gonna, they can't keep faking it. At some point, it's going to come out how they really feel, you know? And it's funny. I, go, I mean, I, I like being around people that actually show who they are and aren't faking it to make it. Like, let me know who you are straight up, then hide it for years because I'm going to find out at some point that you're full of it, you know? So that's how I feel. And then for me, I guess for me, marriage. Um, I like to be in a courtship first, of course. Um, I think of a friendship, courtship, and then a marriage, you know? And there's and it no time limit. I feel like people are rushing in, oh, it has to be this. Whatever type of connection you connect with that person, if you connect faster than others, that's good because I know plenty of people that have got married after three months and are together for 43 years. It shouldn't be, oh, you got to be married at this time, you know? 
Because I was actually talking to this girl, and I guess she has like four or five kids. And she's like, oh, you're 25, you don't have any kids. Oh, you need to hurry up and have kids because you're going to be old. And I'm like, what in the hell? I don't want to hurry up and have no kids because I don't want to get old. Are you? Because you're going to have kids when you're like 30. They're going to be old. I'm like, okay, I don't care. But you haven't noticed God has made my body to where it doesn't even age that much. So I'm not even going to look like I'm 30, honestly. So I'm going to be good. Like... <laughs> I, my family, we don't age. Um, that's why a lot of people look at me and be like, you still look like you're 16. Um, I don't age, and that's awesome. And I, I thank God for that, for not allowing me to age. I mean, that's a blessing on his own, honestly, because God already had a plan. He knew. He's like, oh, she ain't going to get pregnant for a minute. Let me, you know, make her a little youngster, you know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I get it, you know. And it's cool. I'm fine with that. I don't care, you know. People just so, ugh, you know, have kids, have kids, ugh. I'm not in a rush to have children. Children take a lot of work and energy and you have to be whole before you have kids because I want to treat, I want to raise my kids to be leaders and not followers. You know, I want to teach them the ways of living in God's way and not be so selfish and live it your way because I don't want my kids to be like me and waste 20 years of selfishness, you know? You know, being single and turning up and living life and drinking and dressing half naked because I'm trying to get attention because I'm freaking insecure as hell, you know? Like, now I'm not even insecure. Now I'm just like, Hush. I like covering up. It doesn't bother me. It's cool. And the thing is, I cover up, right? Still be getting attention from guys because I'm a freaking, I'm not ugly, you know? No woman is ugly. So, of course, you're going to naturally, someone's going to gravitate towards you, you know, and give you kind of like, oh, she's pretty, huh? You know? Um... And I embrace who I am. I don't wear makeup. Um, and I have acne scars on my face. And I do not wear makeup. People, this girl actually asked me. She's like, how you get, how you leave the house with no makeup? Because I have acne scars and I just can't do it. It's like, oh. I said I used to be like that. But I think the fact that I'm growing as an individual, I just don't give a damn. I'm in this like, I don't care. I don't care. I really don't. If I could wear a shirt that says, I don't give a damn how you feel about me, I really would. I would rock the heck out of my shirt. Like, I don't, my looks and my clothes and who and how I look does not define me. And people are like, oh, it's easy for you to say because you're attractive. Okay, really? Come on, people now. Everybody has something attractive about them. It shouldn't even have to be about looks. It might be your personality. Some people might not be the finest things on earth, but dang, their personality is so damn awesome. Okay, and they got that good personality and the way they carry themselves, that confidence. I mean, it gets you somewhere, trust me, okay? Because you wonder why these guys are not so fine, got these bad, these pretty, awesome women. Because they're men of God and also because they have that confidence and they know who they are. That's all that matters, okay? And so for me, I guess, marriage, you know, a marriage that puts God first. It's two flawed individuals that come together and put God first. They pray, you know? They fellowship, you know, they talk. They actually communicate. Because I feel like in marriages, people don't. They just be playing around, man. And it's actually love there, you know. And it's God in the center of it. Because when you put God in the center of marriage, it's never going to fail. If, that's why these marriages fail, because they don't put God in the middle. If you put God in the middle, it ain't going to go. You, it's going to be whole all the time, all the time. Yes, it's going to be some issues. I mean, they're flawed. They're growing. But I feel like it's not going to get to the point where it's a divorce. You know? And then some people, you know, for me, when I'm looking for my boost, a man of God, you know, he has to have godliness and he has to be spiritual mature. Because, like, some people are not mature spiritually yet. You know, I feel like they're kind of still getting there. You kind of can tell that, oh, he's going to get there at some point, so let me just let him continue to grow right quick. Uh, you know, you, yeah. He has to be humble. Be able to apologize for his sins and apologize just in general, you know, be a, you know, seeking after God type of guy, you know, more interested in your soul, not in your body, if that makes sense. Concerned about things of God, you know, things, you know, very caring. And he, I don't want him to be perfect. I feel like a lot of people are looking for this perfect person, you know. You know, I know how to control his temper because I feel like a lot of people don't. You know, have morals and values. A lot of people don't have morals and values. That's their way of thinking, unfortunately. Um, 
And I guess I, I have watched wrote a paragraph about like what type of marriage I don't want because that's just how I really feel. Um, a marriage. The problem with the circular world is that we worship romantic and sexual love instead of worshiping God of love. We value materialism instead of morality. We do everything sexual that only married people are supposed to do, fornication, then ask others to celebrate a wedding when we finally get around to sleep for stepping into God's marital arrangements and then we're surprised that the horse before the cart marriages are ruined by infidelity and divorce. That's what I was saying. Like, how are you surprised when you already started the marriage off with sex and sin already? You're getting up in there all hell wrong. I mean, just being honest, just straight up just wrong. Like, you got, you just got in the marriage straight up having sex the whole time. Like, are you freaking serious? And then when you get married, you're surprised that all of a sudden he cheating. All of a sudden it's about sex all the time. All of a sudden he whining because you ain't giving him no sex. Are you serious? It started off bad. I don't... How you gonna start something off bad and then get mad when it ends bad? Like, <laughs> come on now. Like, come on now, people. I used to do... I mean, come on now. I'm raising my hand because it's like, seriously, that's what I used to do. Like, really, come on now. Come on. Let's not play each other. Come on. Don't start... Don't sit there and start a marriage off bad. Then have a wedding and then finally glorify God finally in the marriage. After you just sat there and sin the whole time, I didn't feel bad about it at all. I see if you stop having sex, you know, both of y'all like, oh, we're going to be celibate, focus on God, reprogram your way of thinking. You're good. I've seen people done that before. It's amazing, actually. Um, you can do that, but a lot of people aren't trying to do that. They're like, whatever. I just want to have some kids and a nice house. You know, because I'm almost 35 and I don't want to be out here in these streets by myself. I look kind of crazy. Like, what the, why are you worried about what everybody else thinks? Is this high school still? I feel like it's still high school. Like, people are still caught up in, I don't want everybody to look at me crazy. I don't give a damn. I think God allowed me to get bullied to where I just don't care because it's like, come on now, people. You do not supposed to care what the world thinks. You ain't put here for them. I wasn't put here to be liked or put here for anyone. I feel like I was put here for God, and it is what it is, honey. I was like, honey, I like that. I know, right? You got to think that way sometimes. Because it's like, man, folks got to be messed up sometimes. No, honey, I wasn't put here for you, honey. You need to humble yourself and go pushing somewhere. Because I ain't. do not sit there and get married. And you have sex the whole time. You don't feel bad. You're not focusing on God. It's all about sex, lust, and romance. You know, you have not once put God in it, and then when it ends badly, it's like, oh, I'm surprised. What you surprised for? You ain't even starting the marriage off right, honey. You're sitting here popping out kids, doing all kind of, and it's like the kid is not the sin. Like, I, I hate when people sit there and, and treat the child like as if the child is the sin. When they had sex, that was the sin. That's what people need to also get together, because I feel like old people be kind of stuck on stupid with that. The sin was having sex, not the child. Just leave it like that and it is what it is. Okay, people? And then for me, a marriage, which I want to be in, is a couple who puts God first. Both have worked on themselves with God's help. They both are focused on God. They do not value materialism, but have morals. Amen? And they will, they will wait till marriage for sex and have rules so they don't cross that line. They communicate with each other and acknowledge God in every way. When they get married, they do not put up a show. Because I feel like a lot of people put up shows and marriages. They keep it 100. And then when they do have an argument, they do not go outside that marriage and talk to people that ain't about their life. Okay? You talk to you some uh, pastors and some Christians that got some dang sense. Don't talk to nobody that's in this world. And you know who's in this world. Stop playing games. You know them people that's out here in these streets. No, don't talk to them. They ain't no. They don't, they don't have a relation with the Lord. So it's like, what you talking to them for? They're a little off already. Let them figure it out by themselves, okay? Because obviously, some, like I tell people, you can't force God on anyone, okay? Let them figure it out by themselves, okay? Just be let people see God through you and see the way you carry yourself and kind of be looking at you kind of crazy like, why is she not out here in these streets partying, dressing half naked? Because I don't want to. Hey, and then I live in Georgia, so we have homosexuality. Um, of course, that is wrong. Come on, people. So I guess I'll read a scripture about that. And this, this is all with love because I feel like you can be delivered from having, um, you can be delivered from being gay. You know, you can. I know, not, I know a lot of people that's been gay and they're not anymore. And that, that's not because Christians push that on them. They actually allow God in their heart. They turn away from their ways. They stop being who they were before prior to getting saved, you know. 
I'm thinking that was a Fijian something, you know? You should not lie with a male as one lies with a female. It's a dumb domination. It really is, honestly. Um, and then I have other scriptures. Leviticus 20, 13. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10. Romans chapter 1, 26 through 28. Timothy, 1 Timothy um, chapter 1, verse 8 through 10. Genesis chapter 19, verse four through five you know and the list goes on i'll make a i guess separate video about that because i live in atlanta and atlanta there's a lot of gays here um it's everybody's there they literally have a street where it's a rainbow land it's like they have their own piece over there and it's like gay heaven over there or something ah it's crazy like people are way too open with that and you have to watch the that stuff like that should open your eyes to show you how the world works like the world accepts anything and it's getting to a point where the world just like, oh, it's good, it's good, oh well, you know. Gays getting married now, it's, it's getting to the point where a lot of things that are no-no, the world is like, I mean, hey, everybody else is doing it. <laughs> it's just because the world's doing something doesn't mean it's right. And that's why I have to keep saying over and over again. And also, I'm 25 and I'm single and it's a blessing and I'm continuing to grow. And whatever man God brings to me, I will be open for that person and love. But he has to be right with God. Be compassionate, loving. Put God first. Open to change. And not in this world. Okay? And not materialistic. Because I'm not. That's what I really... God knows my heart, so he'll hook a sister up one day. <laughs> so, welcome to my channel. Uh where I'm unworthy, um, I am perfect, um, God gives me grace and I'm not religious and I always keep 100 on my page. <laughs>